Uh, yes, Lars, Sonnen here, and in today's video we're going to analyze a game played by Soviet and Russian chess grandmaster Yuri Averbach. As you know, on the 8th of February Averbach turned 100, but since the last two days I have a high temperature, failed to upload a video that day. First, let me highlight his career achievements and then we will go through this game. At age 22, Averbach became a master of the USSR and in 1952, when FIDE introduced Grandmaster's title, he was among many to earn that title. In 1954, Averbach won the USSR championship and two years later he shared first place with Mark Taimanov and Boris Pasky. Averbach published countless textbooks, largely contributed to chess and game theory, and composed more than 200 endgame studies. Writing books required huge dedication and time. It was during this hard work when his eyesight deteriorated. Uh, but Averbach also contributed to opening theory and a popular variation of King's Indian Defense is named after him. He worked as a second with five world champions, Botvinnik, Tal, Smyslov, Petrosian, Spassky. From 1969, Averbach also acted as an arbiter. The following game which I want to share with you, Averbach played against P. Morton in 1940 in Moscow. With this being said, now we can go for the game. In this game, Averbach had white pieces and he opened up with e4, to which Morton answered with c5. Sicilian defense is on the board and after a few more moves, Scheveningen variation appears on the board. a6 white castled kingside and b5. Now, this is a rare continuation, usually in here Blake is either playing Queen c7, Bishop e7 or Knight d7, Knight c6, but in our game we have b5. And with Bishop f3, White hurries to make use of the vulnerability of the long diagonal. e5 can be now a threat and a very dubious Knight fd7 move followed. This is bad. Better is at least playing Rook a7. In the database I found games played by Wojtaszek and Fedoseyev where in this position they chose rook a7 continuation. And here is the problem with knight fd7. e5 by Averbach, d5 and rook e1. Averbach is protecting his central pawn but this is not good and better was going for a direct kill. Can you find the winning line for white? By the way, this is a nice position of a deep analysis, you know. Ready? Uh, it turns out that in here this knight takes d5 is allowing white to win. There are two games in the database with this knight takes d5 continuation. If e takes d5 then bishop takes d5, now the rook is hanging, and if rook a7 then bishop takes f7. And yes, suddenly the attack escalates quickly and black is defenseless, and then check Queen h6, yeah, black can't save this position. Now, for example, bishop g5 can be a threat or knight c6. In our game, after d5, we have rook e7. So, Averbach is missing a golden opportunity and the fight goes on. Knight c4, knight f4, bishop e7, b3. The knight is kicked away and white's dark squared bishop is occupying the long diagonal. Later, this bishop is going to become a key attacking piece. Meanwhile, the light squared bishop is also transferred to, a, to an attacking diagonal. Queen g4, bishop f8. Look at this miserable position, guys. Almost all black pieces are on the 8th rank and yeah, Positions like these are impossible to hold. Knight f3. Meanwhile, white wants to find a better square for his knight as well. h5. Knight e7. h takes g6. f takes g6. Knight h5. Knight f6 is the threat. Black plate. Knight d7, but blocked the bishop's diagonal and left the pawn on e6 unprotected. But. Even if not knight d7, for example, if bishop g7, then again, there is no way of saving this position. Here is one of the possible ways of how white can win the game. And then f7, a very, very beautiful move. If queen f7, then queen d4 is winning. And if king takes f7, then knight g5 check. 
if here, then queen d4, and again white is winning. In our game after knight h5, we have knight d7, and the pawn on e6 dropped. King h7, queen f7. Now white wants to play e6. This can lead to a checkmate, right? Black played knight c6, but anyways, e6 followed. e6 check, d4, knight takes d4, knight e5, attacking white queen, and now a question arises, how should white proceed? Ready? This time we have knight c6, pinning the knight and attacking black queen. Knight f6 and black queen dropped. In return, black won white queen, but yeah, this bishop is a monster and just no way to neutralize the threat. White is winning. There is now a mating threat, right? And... Black played g takes h5, but this is losing very quickly. Although, if not g takes h5, then what? If rook takes f7, then check. And again, black is suffering heavy losses. White has so many extra pieces. In our game, after rook takes e1, we have g takes h5, and the knight also dropped. Bishop g7, and by going for a queen promotion, Yuri Averbach announced a checkmate. Uh, this game actually reminds me of another game played by Averbach. Again, that was played in 1940 and this time his opponent is Andrei Kuznetsov. In this game we also see how Averbach's dark squared bishop is playing a key role. Let's take a look at that game as well from move 22. Try to figure out how to proceed with the attack. Ready? Here Averbach played knight takes d5, and after e takes d5, our e pawn is marching forward, thus opening up the dark squared bishop's diagonal. e takes d7, queen takes d7, queen f4, knight c6, and knight takes f5. This time we see the second knight sacrifice, queen g5 check, and black resigned. If king h8, then bishop takes f6, right? And again, there is no way of saving this game. Check. Bishop takes f5. Yep, this is a destruction. That's why after queen g5 check, black resigned. So this is it, dear chess lovers. Hope that you enjoyed the game. Feel free to share it with your friends as well. And in the end, a chess puzzle. An easy one where the task is to find the mating line for white. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.